Hello! Today is a special day. For today marks my two year YouTube anniversary. It's been two years since I've been doing videos on YouTube and to celebrate this I want to do something kind of cool. So what I have for you today is dynamic torches in game. So as you can see we are here in this horrible dank cave and it's pretty dark. Um, over here we can see that there's a torch and it's giving off a little bit of light. Um, so I'm going to give you a demonstration of this and it is actually pretty damn cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take the torch off. As you can see, uh, it's dark obviously because I just broke the torch. But if we pick it up and we hover over the torch, you'll see that it actually lights up the area. Now the interesting thing here, thing here is, is that, um, as I said, this is dynamic lighting. So if I move over here, you'll see that the area actually gets lighter and likewise, over there gets darker. So for instance, if I come over here, it gets lighter and then it gets darker. Um, and I can go anywhere in this room and just walk around. And as you can see, as I move around and I, as I approach areas, it gets lighter and it gets darker. So it's very, very cool. And if I just go off it, it gets dark again. And if I go on it, it gets light again. So you see dark, light, dark, light so it's very very cool and I'm going to show you how it works so where is the actual light coming from and to answer that an end portal simple as that so the great thing about end portals is first off they give off light but from below you can't actually see them they don't render when you're below them so because of this it makes it the ideal candidate for this system now on to how the dynamic lighting actually works so here is the player now four blocks above the player we are constantly spawning an end portal block now once that's spawned it's going to give off light and because we can't see it from below we're going to give the impression that the light is emitting from the player themselves now this much is actually very very simple because you know the player is not moving but what about when we want the player to move well the problem is is that as the player moves the area is going to become too light because these end portal blocks above the player are going to remain so what we need to do is we need to remove the old end portal blocks and only keep the newest. Um, and to do this, it's very, very simple. We just employ fill commands. So we have the blue one, the yellow one, the red one, and the green one. And these all do the same thing. They just cover different zones. So what they do is they attempt to replace end portal with air. Okay. Now you'll notice in the center, there is actually a dead spot, a blind spot. And this blind spot doesn't attempt to convert end portal into air. So basically only end portal directly above the player can exist and any outside of that in this fill zone will be converted to air. Now there are two problems with this. First off we are obviously using end portal and if a player so much as touches an end portal they will be teleported to the end. Now this isn't too much of a problem on flat surfaces but in environments where you're jumping all over the place, there is a slight possibility that you will touch the end portal. Um, so this is better suited for, like I said, flat terrain. The second problem is that this won't work in cramped spaces. So for instance, let's say you're in a too high tunnel, you're walking along, it's not going to work because, as I mentioned, the end portal is being spawned four blocks above the player's head and the four blocks will be outside of the tunnel. So, like I said, this has its problems, but in many situations it is very, very cool and it's a really nice effect to add to your maps.